Let me tell you a story about a young woman almost a lifetime ago. Rishi Sunak has put his family story front and centre of his campaign to be the next Conservative leader. My mum studied hard and got the qualifications to become a pharmacist. His mother's work as a pharmacist. She met my dad, an NHS GP, and they settled in Southampton. A message repeated over and over again by some of his supporters. He's not of privileged background at all, absolutely standard well, he, We keep hearing that, background. That's actually, he went to Winchester School, that's he, pretty privileged. He got a scholarship. His mum was a chemist who ran a small shop in Southampton, his dad was a, a local doctor. His mum was a pharmacist and his dad was a GP. He, he was born into a, uh, a pharmacy. Rishi Sunak's campaign has told a powerful story of middle-class aspiration, how hard work and sacrifice has delivered great success. But his critics have a different narrative. They say his life and rapid ascent is, in fact, a tale of extraordinary privilege. One of his cabinet rivals told me the posh boys have seized control of the party again. It was an attack Mr Sunak had to endure publicly in the last television debate. I saw kids at my school being let down in Leeds. I saw them not get the opportunities, not get the proper educational standards that you might have got at your school, Rishi. Rishi Sunak was born in 1980 to Usha and Yashvir. His father was a GP, his mother a pharmacist, who later bought the pharmacy in Southampton. They wanted the best for their children, as they told a documentary team for the BBC in 2000, in footage rarely seen since. You want your children to get educated, get degrees, be in good sort of reasonable professions. And you, you can see the success of it. Yeah. I mean, you get an education, you get a good job, you have respect, you go up in uh, your status. After attending private schools in Southampton, in 1993, Mr. Sunak won a place at Winchester College, one of the poshest public schools in the country. Despite the claims of some of his supporters, he confirmed to us he did not receive a scholarship. His parents paid the fees, about £22,000 a year in today's money, as his father told the BBC. I think financially it was quite a huge commitment for us because Winchester, the fees at Winchester all, all double what we were, had to pay if we went to the local school in Southampton. So it was, it was quite a, a large financial commitment. The school's motto is manners maketh man, and Mr Sunak adored it. The setting of the school is, is just beautiful. And you know, the quality of not just the teaching, but the facilities, the sport, the music, the drama, you know, the cricket pitches for me are just you know, great places to play cricket on a Saturday. And it's something that I'll always remember very fondly. And in, even, at, even at university, a lot of my friends from school are there. At Winchester, I was one of very few Asians. I mean, the first generation into, into that level of society. It does put me in an elite, you know, of achievement, definitely in society but I always consider myself sort of, you know, professional middle class. It was a natural step to head straight to Oxford University, which at the time was accused of favouring private school students. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak owns an approximately £1.8 million 19th underscore century mansion in North Yorkshire with a tennis court, gymnasium, swimming pool including additional facilities. PM Rishi Sunak also possesses a crib in central London in Kensington News. It is furnished with five bedrooms, four bathrooms, and two function lounges spread across four levels, as per descriptions. The home apparently is priced at £6.5 million and is near 10 Downing Street. Where he lives in a opposite the sea and overlooking it is his penthouse in Santa Monica, California, which was the foremost crib he acquired with his wife. The penthouse has been decorated by interior stylist Marmel Radziner who has earned a name in the interior design industry as a contemporary interior designer. Purportedly it originates from an oak tree which is custom constructed oak cupboards and cabinets, an elegant stylish kitchenette, cut glass crystal dividers and walls in restrooms and bathrooms and extra additional interior ornaments. This residence apparently priced at £5.8 million and presents a picturesque and gorgeous scenery of the Pacific Ocean. Accordance with intelligence gathered from Forbes, 
Prime Minister Rishi Sunak allegedly is the owner of a flat in South Kensington which he purchased in 2001 for £239,026 when he was an employee at Goldman Sachs as an investment expert. The South Kensington flat is currently being utilised as a vacation crib for Rishi Sunak and wife Aksata Muthi's extended family. I quote, home is where love resides, memories are created, friends always belong, and laughter never ends. Rishi said. You up to the master bedroom. The rent was just under $20,000 a month, around £13,000 at the time. The mild weather, the palm trees, the ocean views are all desirable. And Hollywood makes it even more desirable. Everyone knows about Southern California. Uh, the average Joe would not be able to afford to live close to the beach or on the beach. It was conveniently close to the office where Mr. Sunak set up a U.S. branch of the hedge fund Thelem Partners in 2010. He was named as a partner at the time. The branch was ultimately owned by a company registered in the Cayman Islands, a tax haven. We've obtained this document from the U.S. authorities. It lists three investment funds managed by Mr. Sunak's branch. We've identified that funds with those names were also based in tax havens, including two in the Cayman Islands. And there's one more detail. The document shows how partners in the hedge fund were paid with a share of the tax haven funds they managed. Did Mr Sunak earn bonuses offshore in the Cayman Islands? If so, what happened to them? We've asked him for an answer. Mr Sunak did not deny that he received assets in tax havens, but he told us any assets he had were subject to US tax, which was paid in full. There's no suggestion Mr Sunak did anything illegal. In June 2014, the couple made a commitment to this penthouse, just a stone's throw from the beach. The price, some $6.8 million. We can't find a mortgage. Apparently, it was bought for cash double trouble for Rishi Sunak and his wife. He admits he had residency status in the US even as he was appointed chancellor. And tonight his wife says she will pay UK taxes on the millions she earns around the world. The Sunak family's personal wealth came to public attention in the spring when it emerged his wife was a non-dom, meaning she didn't pay UK tax on her foreign income. It also transpired he'd held a green card, permitting him residency in the US until just last year. As the only member of the cabinet to make the Sunday Times rich list, Mr Sunak's wealth has become his Achilles heel, as he struggles to prove he understands the plight of ordinary people wrestling with the worst cost of living crisis in a century. There have been big questions about your judgment when it came to your green card status and your wife's non-dom status. So I've always been a completely normal UK taxpayer. My wife is from another country, so she's treated differently. But she explained that in the spring and she resolved that issue. But look, there, there is commentary about my wife's family's wealth. And so let me just address that head on because I think it's worth doing because I'm actually incredibly proud of what my parents-in-law built. My father-in-law came from absolutely nothing and just had a dream and a couple of hundred pounds that my mother-in-law's savings provided him. And with that, he went on to build one of the world's largest, most respected, most successful companies. Uh, he, he married a very, very wealthy yeah, woman. Is he, that a problem? Is that tax status a problem? No, it's not a problem. I'll tell you why. Because we believe in aspiration in the Conservative Party. We believe that if you're born in a chemist shop in, uh, in Southampton and you go on to, to get a great education on merit, to, uh, to get, uh, have a great business career on merit, to fall in love with whoever you want to fall in love with, and then to have a political career in which you really deliver for the country in some of the most difficult times, I call that a success. And in the Conservative Party, we're in favour of people making a success of, of their lives. My values are non-negotiable. Patriotism, fairness, hard work. But even if he wins over the Conservative membership to clinch the leadership and become Prime Minister, winning over the British public amid unprecedented economic turmoil may be a far tougher challenge. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel.
you will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.